If you have a history of toxic relationships, the last thing, the last thing you should do is go with that chemistry that you're feeling. That's the last thing. If you have a history, and there's nothing wrong with chemistry in general, but if your history is having a bad picker, which what I mean by that is picking the wrong people to date, to form a relationship with. Sometimes that, that chemistry, that chemical haze that you're in is an indicator of old subconscious patterns, that familiar thing, and you're just gonna keep doing the same thing over and over. You're on repeat. Toxic relationships are an addiction. I am not judging you. I've been there. I've been there many times, okay? I got out of this vicious cycle. If you don't know who I am, my name's Mary Beth Shredder. I am founder of Day One Life Coaching. I help people break addictions and heal relationships. And this is one of the big things that like I get so many clients. Relationships are hard, right guys? They are, like I admit it. So when I hear somebody saying like, all women are like this, I coach both men and women. So I hear all women are like this or all men are like this. That's, an in that's not true. That's a limiting belief. You are lying to yourself. There are many successful relationships. I hate to break it to you. The common denominator is you, and we have to take accountability. Like I said, this is not a judgment. I've been there too. We have to take accountability. Why are we picking these people? Is it chemistry, looks, money? You know, what is it? Like, oh, well, this guy, I mean, he had all these red flags, but, you know, he was six foot tall, he had a lot of money, had a great job, completely ignore that he's an F boy, right? You completely ignore that because he fits all these other things that are superficial. Men, same thing. You're picking a woman based on physical attraction instead of character, and then you're mad about it later that you know she ends up being a toxic person and you can't be vulnerable with her. You can be vulnerable with the right people, with someone who's a healthy communicator, someone who is not toxic. So this isn't all women are like this. This is that you need to make new choices and stop repeating old subconscious toxic patterns. So this is a problem with you. So a lot of guys want to come in and rescue a woman. A woman. They want to rescue, so they've got that hero's complex. And then, you know, you, 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 you pick up these wounded birds and wonder why things aren't working out so great. Maybe start looking for someone more on your level instead of trying to save everybody, right? Women, y'all do the same thing. Trying to save men. Oh, I can change them. No, you can't. You, want, you don't want to date potential. You want to date somebody who is already... I mean, no one's gonna be perfect, right? We all, we're gonna be healing until the day we die, right? We, we are never gonna be perfect. You don't have to be perfect before you get in a relationship, but there are a lot of things. You want someone to be on your level when it comes to healthy communication, healthy patterns in relationships in general. You want them to have, you know, a big indicator. I was just talking about this with one of my clients yesterday, fighting style, a huge indicator of, is this relationship going to last? is argument style. How do they argue? If someone, you know, gets really loud and you have all this drama all the time and they can't communicate effectively, that's a bad sign. You're going to have one of those roller coaster ride relationships um, or if someone gives you the silent treatment, that's actually abusive. That's not good. It's okay to give people a little bit of time to collect themselves and think, you know, and that's actually a good idea, but that's different than the silent treatment, right? So what else do I want to talk, talk to you about? Um, basically, you know, if you are looking for someone to date, the a huge thing that I want to tell you is that I see this all the time, all of the time in my practice, where people are going out and drinking on the first date, second date, third date. Those you're you're literally with a stranger, and when you're drinking alcohol, you have clouded judgment. And I know nobody wants to hear this, but you you're making bad decisions you're not seeing what's right there in front of your face because alcohol dumbs down your brain. Sorry guys, if you really wanna make a good decision, you're gonna to notice too. There's not gonna be a lot of second dates because you can see so clearly, you have so much clarity when you are dating while you're not drinking alcohol. And if that sounds crazy to you, what? I can't go on a date with alcohol. You got a problem, okay, you do. 
because that's an addiction. If you don't feel like you could go on a date with somebody without alcohol, there's some work you need to do on yourself. Been there, not judging you, I was there too. I quit drinking five years ago, I'm alcohol free. Best decision of my life, everything in my life improved, especially um, my picker, right? You know, who, we're, who we are choosing to date. And I wanna put it, I wanna say here, this is a good place to say this. You, an indicator of a good relationship is not time, not long-term. Sure, that can be one, but I know so many miserable people in long-term relationships and marriages. They are miserable. They are checked out. That's not, that's not a successful relationship. Um, a successful relationship is one you're happy in. And guess what? Not, sometimes people grow apart and that's okay. Not everyone is meant to be your forever soulmate. Sometimes it was just someone who helped you with your growth and you should honor that. You don't say that relationship was a failure. I've had beautiful relationships that, that weren't my long-term person, but I still love them, cherish them, um, still friends with them. Just because something did, wasn't meant to be your forever person doesn't mean that relationship was a failure. I want that language removed because there are so many failed relationships that are, those people are still married to each other and they freaking hate each other. You know who they are. We all know them, okay? That's not successful just because you stayed with somebody. I would argue to say that you, you should get a divorce if you're with somebody like that. Everyone deserves to be loved. Um, and you need to let somebody go if you do not feel love for them, if you do not, if, it, if it's gone, if you grew apart, it's okay. It's the mature thing to do. I know I'm gonna get a lot of people arguing with me about that, but you know, is it really better to be with somebody that you can barely stand? You know, release them. They wanna be with someone who loves them too. Gosh, I hope this resonated with you guys. If you are ready for coaching, if you see this in yourself, if you were like I used to be, and just had a bad picker, picking people for the wrong reasons, that chemistry. Well, yeah, you're attracted because that's familiar to you. It's literally our subconscious mind and getting involved and puts us in that chemical haze. It's like, ooh, this is something that I can play out and I'm gonna make it work this time. This time I'm gonna make it work, I'm gonna change them. If you're ready to get to the root cause and bring up all of these subconscious patterns, that's something that I help people with to heal relationships. Or I can also help you with your any other addiction like food addiction and alcohol addiction. These are things I only teach things that I have healed with myself. And um, my website's day1lifecoaching.com, D-A-Y-O-N-E, lifecoaching.com. If you are ready and willing to stop these old patterns, give me a call. Give me. Uh, you can actually fill out a contact form and what I offer is a free Zoom call with me one-on-one -on -one, and we could see, we could establish from there if coaching is the right thing for you. I hope this made sense to you guys and I hope you have a wonderful day.